Are we sitting comfortably? Are the lights turned down low and the shadows lengthening in the room? Are the curtains closed and are the doors locked? Good. Then let us begin. The Ghosts of Oxney Bottom near Ringwald in Kent. This is such a large case file that I have made this into three separate episodes. Episode 1 The Grey Lady of Oxney Bottom. Oxney Bottom was held in some dread by locals of the Deal to Dover area, and one of my first recollections of this area when we moved here in the late 1970s was to be told not to go to Oxney Bottom, either alone or at night. In a dip in the road on the A258 between Dover and Ringworld, an old drive emerges from the wooded area, with a ruinous, ivy-covered building at the roadside. This is all that remains of one of the gatehouses to Oxney Manor, the remains of which were to be found deeper within the woodland. Here the manor house has stood since Norman times, or possibly even earlier, and at the time of my investigation the house was dangerously ruinous. However, it has, within the last 20 years, been rebuilt at, I am sure, enormous expense. A chapel lies a short distance away from the house and almost invisible in its tangle of saplings and creepers. All the paths and the entire estate lay much overgrown and deserted. The chapel is mentioned in the Doomsday Book as a chapel of ease for the nearby abbey in Langdon both of which were damaged and demolished in the Reformation. It was used as a barn until the 19th century until it burnt down under suspicious circumstances. It was patched up and used for a few years by the then owners of Oxney, the Lacosta family. Back in the late 18th century, Oxney Court was built into a fine Regency mansion for Sir Edward Banks by an architect named Richard Rothy. It boasted mock battlements and turrets, and a fine, round, castellated tower. Large walls were constructed through the woods defining the property line, and the gardens were magnificent. But it was destroyed by a blaze during the First World War, when the house was commandeered as an operational headquarters, and place for the recuperation of soldiers returning from the front. A child in the 1960s, is said to have died here by falling down a well in one of the outbuildings. A large cement block was placed, sealing the well, which carried an inscription bearing the date it was made, in addition to the word well. By the 1970s, when I started exploring the area, the house was in a dangerous state, and the once stately park, an overgrown and ivy-entangled woodland. The local stories of the hauntings at Oxney are legend, a few of which I have included to illustrate how locally famous this location is. The most famous and most reported apparition of this area is, of course, that of the Grey Lady of Oxney Bottom. This apparition was always described as an old woman who was seen walking, or as some describe it, hobbling onto the A258 road from the old drive to Oxney Court. A local belief was that she was knocked down by a horse and cart whilst fetching water, although she is never seen carrying a bucket or other means of collecting water, nor have I ever found any historical record of this. The appearances are always sudden, and many cars have swerved, often off of the road as they try to avoid a figure which suddenly appeared, and then, when the road is checked, is not there. On many occasions, this apparition has been known to employ modern transport. In 1958, for instance, she boarded a number 80 double-decker bus. The conductor, Tom Ralph, recollected how the bus stopped at Oxney Bottom on its way to Dover to Deal sometime in the winter. A female figure was seen boarding the bus and ascending to the top deck, but when Mr Ralph went to collect the fare, there were no new customers up there. Bemused, he spoke to passengers of how he thought someone had got on the bus. One passenger replied that someone had, and that they had sat down behind them. There was nobody there. The figure was described as solid, female, and dressed in dark clothes. 
There have been other occasions when cars have stopped to pick up an elderly hitchhiker who vanishes when the car is a short way along the road. In one tale, as the driver passed through the area of Oxney Bottom on his way to Dover, he looked in the mirror to find that there was a woman sitting in the rear of the car, who then vanished. The driver, who was well known to me, needed three or four stiff drinks when he reached home. In 1973, some four engineers went ghost hunting in Oxney Bottom Woodland. Two of these claimed to have met with the Grey Lady, and described her face as being serious or miserable in aspect. She disappeared too quickly for a detailed study to be made. A sighting was published by Andrew Green in 1999 where he tells of a coach party who witnessed a grey lady cross the road in front of them while on their way to Walmer Castle. The driver slammed on the brakes, but unable to stop quickly enough, the coach had passed straight through the figure before it finally ceased its forward motion. There was nobody there. I have spoken to many who claim to have seen the ghost. The stories are remarkable in their similarity. The figure, which is always described as dark, is suddenly seen either standing in the path of the vehicle or moves into the path of the vehicle. Some have reported feeling a definite bump as though something has been hit, but there is never anything to be seen when the car stops. There have also been numerous accidents on this stretch of road. One author quotes a figure of 20 in a 12 month period and there is often to be seen a car or a van in the trees and ditch at the side of the road, as they have swerved to avoid a figure. This, however, is nothing new, for in 1850 the Duke of Wellington had his coach turn over there when driving back to Warmer Castle from Dover Castle, although the details of why are not recorded. I had a personal account related to me by a colleague at work in perhaps 1988. Her daughter driving her car late at night from Dover to Deal suddenly bumped over something while passing through the dip at Oxney and lurched violently to the left as though something had been just been run over. There was nothing in the road, although the car ended up off the road and into the dip and fields. <laughs> 